Today we wanted to talk about the mock meat type stuff. So Joey didn't really find my video the best on the mock meat situation. But to be honest, I, I was quite triggered by it. It's quite okay. triggered. I, I, I understand your sentiment though. I, do, I understand what you're saying. Um, but I, had the, I saw many problems from an advocacy point of view with what you were saying. Uh, I don't think that your position outweighs the good of advocating for those mock meats. Um, just based yeah. on the majority of society, um, you're not going to persuade many people with a bowl full of lentils and some potatoes. Uh, but people go from a burger to a pretty good substitute and they go, wow, you know, if I want a burger, I can have this substitute. Like they're already eating greasy fried burgers, dude. You think they give a, you know, you think you're going to be able to go, hey, go from a greasy fried, delicious flame grilled burger to um, eat more potatoes because they're healthy. And it's just like, for me, like, I, I fully understand why you're saying that because you feel see the danger in, like, people choosing, you know, like, children-like adults that eat, eat explicitly junk food, get a sore tummy and wonder why the vegan diet isn't working for them and then throw the whole philosophy out the window with it. Um, but, you know... I'm relying on people to be responsible adults and, uh, you know, balance their diet correctly. But if they want to go out and splurge on a cheat day or a cheat meal, have you seen all these eating challenge videos on YouTube? You think you're going to compete with those with some lentils and potatoes, mate? <laughs> Got no chance. Like, we need the vegan magnums. We need the Beyond Burgers. We need the vegan cheeses. We need the good uh, competitive vegan products. So in that market, they, 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 there's some form of persuasion for people to even think about, you know, because we, we're, we're battling with taste, convenience, you know, we're, we're going up against it, dude. We're going up against the battles. And the last thing we need is vegan advocates going, these vegan products are shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they might have made your tummy feel bad. Mine doesn't. Like, if I have a burger, I feel all right. You know, in, in, this, in the full context of my diet, I can add these foods in. Um, and they're a lot more persuasive than lentils. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I apologize that it was triggering. I think the thing is with the video, what I like to do is I generally, if there's like a gray area in something, I like to sort of do my best to come up with what I think makes the most sense and go for it. And then like, imagine like a blank sheet of paper. When there's just a blank page, sometimes I like to just put pen to the paper and start drawing. And sometimes it looks like shit, sometimes it looks good. And I think that's what I did this time is I just started off by just throwing something out there and seeing what people thought about it. And it was interesting seeing the response in the comments because so many people were agreeing with me and, and I had... Like I did a poll earlier today saying what percentage of you people find that uh, mock meats and the substitute foods make you feel uh, ill or what percentage of you don't have any problems with them at all. And it was interesting to see that the majority of people actually didn't have any problems with them, but it was 70-30. So 30% of the people said that they felt ill when eating um, the products. So that is a significant portion of yeah, people. Bro, 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 bro. Fro in the vegan movement, maybe. People, maybe 30% of people are eating a clean whole foods diet. They go out and have a Beyond Burger. Of course, they're going to feel the difference. Of course, you're going to feel the difference. But when we're advocating to non-vegans who already have a shit diet, who eat beef, eggs, fried bacon nearly every second day. I only eat a little bit of meat, but they're eating meat every single day. And you go yeah. from a burger to a Beyond Burger, they're not gonna have the same tummy discomfort that you have because you, you're, how long have you been vegan for? Nearly 10 years now. Nearly 10 years, dude. And you eat what? All whole foods all the time. Predominantly I whole foods. have a burger, but I'll just feel sick when I do. <laughs> yeah. But you are different, dude, this is, this is, we're advocating to people who have mostly a crappy standard American or standard Western sort of diet with meat. And if not, that it's like um, they're eating meat every single day. Now, the macronutrient yeah. profile of, of a Beyond Burger isn't that far off of an actual blood and flesh burger. And it doesn't have cholesterol. It does have saturated fat. Not the best for health. Um, 
but we're trying to close slaughterhouses here. Now, what do you think's more persuasive to the general population who haven't been vegan eating clean whole foods for 10 years, um, a Beyond Burger with some melted vegan cheese and a vegan thick shake, or eat more potatoes. And also I wanted to say, uh, there's a problem with you advocating just telling people to eat more potatoes. And your sort of rationale was that if people eat more potatoes, they'll eat less meat and that's better for animals. This isn't, this is not vegan advocacy. This is reducitarian, hoping for the best advocacy. People already know they can eat potatoes and yeah, eat more. That's probably gonna, you know, weigh out their meat consumption. You haven't educated them on the moral principle or the philosophy of veganism at all, why they should yeah. avoid animal products. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know, I think we treat people like children a little bit too much. And I think, you know, I, I already think these vegan alternatives are super valuable now because 20 years ago as a vegan, you couldn't even get soy milk at the shops. Now I walk into my local uh, shop here, you can get a vegan Magnum from nearly every 24 hour uh, store here in um, U UK. You can get vegan Ben and Jerry's. People got the munchies, they want to have an ice cream, they've got one. They don't have to exploit and kill dairy cows for that. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's great. Uh, there's a couple of things there. I think that's great that there's the option to, if you're feeling like some junk food, if you're feeling, because like ice creams, for example, Magnum, that was never like a meal anyway that was always junk food in the non-vegan version of it that was always junk food from the start so i'm not saying that it's going to be all uh like people were thinking that that's healthy that they're eating a vegan magnum or something um like i would eat a vegan magnum once in a while so i'm not actually being against consuming these foods on occasion for treats what i'm against is uh well not what i'm against but what i think is unhelpful is promoting them as one-to-one -one substitutes because if people are eating um beef three times a day or something let's say that they eat meat at every meal there's some people who do that and then they just replace that one-to-one -one with um beyond burgers or something or or, or vegan meats i'm not sure if they're going to have the same results like I, I think it might make them feel worse like i, I don't know you're making a, a very broad assumption there dude like i think you're stretching a little bit there do you think there's that much different in macronutrient health profile from a beyond burger to a, a minced up beef second grade beef burger from an old dairy cow that's been exploited and the saturated fat cholesterol and uh trans fats and heme iron in a beef burger and then you go over to a beyond burger it's probably got less junk in it and not much difference into like i wouldn't say one's like a beyond burger's much healthier but i wouldn't you know really say that they're going to do that much worse um and like i don't know i felt like you didn't really say that much in your video it was more like vegan alternatives are shit <laughs> that's that's sort of like the vibe i got uh, because what you're saying is right so there's less animals going to be killed because less people are going to eat meat if there's these low quality bullshit junk foods on the market which give you a stomach ache and diarrhea um like these are like basically well, i think we said um bullshit products that give you a sore tummy and cause diarrhea they gave you a sore tummy and caused you diarrhea a 10 year whole foods vegan but that's your experience and i don't think you were looking at it from an advocacy point of view and looking at it through the eyes of the general population and what they eat and like uh, just from experience, bro, from like what, what we're doing with advocacy is persuasion. Um, we the, These alternatives are like gold, the, especially the Beyond Burger is the best vegan burger on the market in, 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 in comparative to the other mock meats. It, if you, it, I feel like it's the closest thing we've got and it's so much better for the environment. Obviously, less animals being butchered and killed. Oh, mate, the stream quality is <laughs> terrible. Um your, your, the stream is starting really, really bad. Um, I can hear what you're saying in a roundabout way. You're saying that um, so Beyond Meat isn't that bad, actually, really, in comparison to, like, the torture products. The thing is, what I would say is, you've got all the cholesterol and all the saturated fat and the heme iron, as you say, and those unhealthy things that are going to contribute to chronic disease long term. But I think short term, um, if you look at what Beyond Meat is, for example... It's just pea protein isolate mixed with oil, essentially. And t I, I don't know how nutrient-rich that is and how good that is, like, really. Like, a lot of people have been saying that they feel sick when they eat it. And even if it's one quarter of people, only one quarter of people who feel sick when they eat it, there's still quite a lot of 
people. Dude, um, so. uh, I don't see the difference between a like the massive health difference between a minced beef burger and a Beyond Burger. There's some major ethical differences with a be- minced beef burger and a Beyond Burger. Like, yeah. you know, and environmental differences between a minced beef burger and a Beyond be- Burger. I think when you look at this holistically, to trash the Beyond Burger is bad advocacy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. But the, but the way that I was looking at this was... We we want people to eat less meat and, and for, no we don't we want people to stop exploiting animals dude yeah, yeah. less meat that's a reduce throw that idea out the window like we we agree man a hundred percent we agree we want the abolition of the animal holocaust industry that is first and foremost we agree on that like I'm yeah. not I'm not I'm not like promoting meat over here or anything like we fucking yeah, yeah, agree a hundred percent man. Um, yeah. That's first and foremost. But what I was saying in my video is for those people who are reluctant to go vegan and they want meat and they're reluctant to go vegan, then a lot of those people are reluctant because they think that veganism is something which repels them or something. Like They don't like the idea of veganism. A lot of people think that veganism's for like girls or something or veganism's for like uh, hippies or, or gay people or whatever. Like A lot of people are like, oh, I'm manly, I need meat. And they don't like the idea of veganism. So that's why I was saying for those type of people, say, eat more oats, right? Everyone likes oats. <laughs> like Eat more porridge. <laughs> like For those people who are never going to be vegan and we just want them to kill less animals, then wouldn't it be better to say eat more oats than eat like substitute meat, which they're never going to eat? They're never going to eat vegan products because they don't align with veganism. They don't want to be vegan. I think you're making uh, many assumptions here um, and without really any... Um, I think you're just making assumptions. Um, you know, eating more oats... Uh, or, or maybe saying, hey, why don't you choose a vegan alternative here and there, like a vegan Magnum doesn't taste much different, or like, hey, try the Beyond Burger and you're lessening your carbon footprint by magnitudes more and you, you're not enslaving and killing an animal and you know there's zero cholesterol in these burgers. There might be some saturated fat. Yeah, they're not the best for health. Um, I think you could, you could say both. I think one is more persuasive eat you know and and this isn't vegan advocacy what you're talking about is uh scenarios where people just don't want to change and you're you're just advocating this reduce reducetarian approach by saying bulk up more of your food with plant foods yeah 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 that's exactly. more of a plant-based health approach that's not vegan advocacy and i i think trashing the beyond burger in the process isn't the right way about it yeah yeah cuz uh, you're you're 100% right but that's what i mean i mean for those people who don't want to be vegan, then that's sort of the thing that I would say because I've seen this so much that like you, mm. you try and promote veganism, but people are just not on board with it. And I know you've got way more experience than me being a vegan uh, advocate on the streets especially. And But like, don't you think that... like you, you encounter so many people who are just not interested in the vegan message, right? I do, yeah. Yeah, so if they're just like, oh, no, I don't care about veganism, fuck the animals, I eat meat because I'm a man, like, I'm, I'm, I'm a big, strong man and I need my meat, and they don't care about vegan products, they, don't, they wouldn't ever touch the vegan meats, wouldn't it be better in that scenario to say eat more oats and potatoes? Okay, so if there was a scenario where someone wouldn't touch the vegan meats and they didn't care about veganism, and th- in those outlying scenarios where they w- this was the only option... Yeah, it would be an option. Um, I would always yeah. always educate, but this isn't the general. You, you acted like for me, it was. It seemed like you were acting like this was like the best option. Like you know, this is the way we got to advocate. I mean, you're talking about outlying cases for the most part. Um, when I'm doing AV or when I'm advocating, people are pretty interested in what's going on on those screens, and you know, it's pretty terrible for them. Um, yeah. when, when doing advocacy, it's important to reach those who are pretty open to the message. And then when we get enough of us that are open to the message, um, when we get enough of those people persuaded, that's when we get a movement and then we can start changing laws for animals. Um, waste, you know, when you've got these people that are like, really, I'm dead against it, I'm dead against it. I've met those people. They have a Beyond Burger. They actually like them. I was, recently did a, a three weeks worth of filming and we used the Iceland burgers, no bull burgers, in most of uh, the, the filming. And um, they were really persuasive for people. Oh, wow, is that a vegan burger? Wow, I didn't know that you could have that and that's vegan. Um, I think these really these are really good tools to have in the arsenal. Are they as healthy as you know lentils and black beans and greens and 
blueberries? Of course not. And, you know, I just think when we're, we're, we're talking about these products, we say, hey, like, you know, if you want a burger, you can have a burger. If you want an ice cream, you can have an ice cream. But, you know, I think you should plan your diet, you know, correctly so you don't run into any problems in the future. But if you want these products, they're there, they're here. You can still have your burger and not kill animals. Um, yeah, I'm, I've, I've been around many people. You're the first real person I've had say um, that, I've heard say that you had these serious stomach issues or diarrhea after a Beyond Burger. I mean, it just must be you just eat so clean all the time for so, for so long. Your stomach just wasn't used to it or whatever, but yeah. Yeah, well, I think... For- with me, the deal was that I came from a background of having um, intestinal upset and intestinal disorders. And veganism or uh, a whole foods plant-based diet made um, that all go away. And then when like, I ca- occasionally will, um, for example, on, when I was in Mallorca um, in September, last September, I accidentally ate some feta cheese that was in the meal that I, I thought it was vegan cheese, but it was feta cheese. And like I, I had really bad digestion for like literally a couple of days. So like if I yeah. have anything like that, like animal foods just okay. like make me really ill. And um, junk foods, like especially like if I have too much wheat gluten and stuff, uh, sometimes it, yeah. it, it can trigger it a bit. So I, I'm a bit sort of, I need to be a bit careful with my digestion. Yeah. But I know that I'm a bit more sensitive than yeah. most people. But like when I put that poll out okay. and the comments that I got, it just seems that this I, I'm not so rare. Uh, it, it with this sort of like how I react to the these products, I think there's quite a few people who um, maybe don't tolerate them so well. Yeah, yeah. Most of you following are vegans, dude, and a lot of them probably follow a whole foods approach as well. Um, you know, and they might have some issues too. But when you're talking about people who eat meat and dairy three times a day, you give them a Beyond Burger. They're not going to have the, the macronutrient profile of a Beyond Burger isn't far off of a normal meat burger. If you had a normal meat burger, you'd probably run into the same problem. So this is when we're advocating to the large scale of people, a Beyond Burger in the Arsenal is good. They're not going to really notice the difference. Um, I don't I don't feel like that. Um, if they run into stomach issues, then you can go yeah. from there. But um, I think... I just feel like maybe like <laughs> the way you came across was like really anti-vegan products, and then you went into like when people see vegan on a on a product, um, what I, what is it? It's usually junk food. Now people just think veganism is junk food. I mean, if people don't know plant yeah. foods in the grocery aisle, like bananas and apples and blueberries are vegan, then I don't know what to tell them because it's obvious that they are. Um, when they find out that they can get a chicken nugget that's vegan, they wouldn't have known that. So yeah, it's it's like, and and some people's kids want a, ch- a chicken nugget, and some people like having a chicken nugget sandwich, and you know they've been they've ate it since they were young, and it's good to have an alternative out there. Um, if you ate chicken nugget sandwiches for every meal, vegan vegan chicken nugget sandwiches, you would be an irresponsible person because you would be uh, it would be a detriment to your health. And if you ran into health problems because of that, like uh, your mate old Jacko did. And then you wondered why you weren't feeling well. <laughs> you know, I, I just think that that's, that's not very mature and not very responsible. It's like passing off responsibility from yourself and putting it on the vegan products and then throwing your whole moral philosophy out the window and start eating the flesh of animals, which isn't too much different from a Beyond Burger or like really like a fried real chicken nugget and a fried corn chicken nugget. Not too much different. Yeah, I guess we get into the heart of the issue and I think the main thing, it comes down to the fact of responsibility. So you just hit the nail on the head that if people are irresponsible in the way that they eat and they eat a lot of junk food, it, it doesn't really matter if you're going to eat a lot of junk food as a meat eater or eat a lot of junk food as a vegan. It's going to be equally unhealthy. I think the the fear that I was having with some of the advocacy is that people are saying, oh, like, we've got all the, these foods and promoting all these, all, all those alternative, sort of like meat alternatives and promoting all like the, um, like the vegan cheese and the vegan butter and the vegan meats and the vegan eggs and all that sort of stuff. And it, I, I feel like people get the idea that that is veganism. That is what you should eat if you're a vegan. And they're more expensive and it's pushing people into the direction of the, it is, it's promoting something other than 
the healthiest foods. So we're basically saying, go vegan and eat all of the, these things which are more expensive and less healthy than if you were just to go vegan and eat like standard plants. I think, uh, that's, foot, that's my issue. I think foot soldier brother, like I, I appreciate your worry and your concern, but when advocating, you take all these in, thing, things into account. When you meet someone who goes, oh, veganism is too expensive, you say rice, beans, lentils, legumes. When you say, uh, when we, they say, oh, well, I don't like processed food, then you say, okay, whole foods for you. And you know, for the most part, most of the population, I, I mean, I haven't done the research, but I can, you could get a pretty good outline of what people are eating most. Um, you know, these companies that do the best and like you got McDonald's and KFC and Burger King and Pizza Hut and Ben and Jerry's all up there in the top line. Um, you know, chocolate. People want vegan chocolate. Well, they eat chocolate their whole life. They want a vegan chocolate bar. You know, so we need these in our, in our um, sort of arsenal. But I, I guess if you excluded healthy whole foods from your advocacy too, that could be a problem. Um, but like you ha have a holistic approach to the way you advocate. And when these things come up, you discuss them as they come. And, you know, hey, we've got, we've got this. We've got the ice cream. We've got chocolates. We've got the fried food. Got you covered. KFC brought out a vegan burger today in the UK. I'll be going to get it. I'll be going to get it and I'll be making a video about it because guess what the chickens want? The chickens want a vegan burger at every single KFC on earth because guess who that helps? Yeah. That helps chickens. And we take ourselves yeah. out of the picture and we go, okay, we take our, our own you know, pre preferences out of the picture and we say, what is best here for the animals who are suffering every single day getting murdered by the trillion? Do we want some fish fingers that are made out of say, uh, soya protein or some corn? Or do we want to say they're junk? And then people go, well, if they're junk, I'll just have the real thing, then don't worry about it. Or do we say, oh, don't buy from KFC, you know, because KFC are evil. And just and then they put on this vegan burger, no one buys it. Let's just say you had 10 million followers, Foot Soldier, and you said, no one buy the, the, the vegan burger at KFC. It makes my tummy feel crap and just eat more lentils. And then KFC don't get any sales. They take the vegan burger off. Everyone who wants a KFC vegan burger when they're, say, out with their friends or they might not be as health conscious on that day. There's no vegan options at KFC. Veganism's not convenient enough. You know, we need everything we can get, basically. We need all the tools in our arsenal we can get. So, Yeah, man. I definitely agree with you about the supply and demand. That is definitely a, a massive point. Yeah, if, if KFC put out the burger and it flops, that's not going to be good because we want to have the options available right because i i would probably taste test um a kfc um chicken whatever the fuck it is i, I would taste test that as well because um like I, I like eating stuff like that occasionally um i think the whole thing was about the center of your diet where you place the focus on your diet and you i think you've covered it well that your style of ad advocacy takes that into account that you are meeting people where they are. If they are eating junk food, then you're saying, okay, well, here's the junk food alternatives. And if they're eating more healthily, you say, okay, here's the healthier alternatives. And I think that's, I, th I think it really comes down to the responsibility and the quality of the message that people are promoting. The, the fears that I have is that people are promoting veganism to be these alternative foods. So they're saying like, this is veganism basically. So if you're vegan, you're going to be eating all this all this stuff. Wait a second. Who advocates? Oh, like, so people point at food and go, "This is veganism." Like, for starters, obviously you know this more than anyone, nearly. Like that veganism is a moral principle. It's a philosophy we adhere to. These products are just ways of us adhering to this philosophy. You know, um, you, you, we have yeah. leather alternatives. We have burger alternatives. We have chocolate alternatives that don't involve enslavement and murder of direct murder of animals like you know if people are pointing at food and going this is veganism they should be pointing at the philosophies and say hey this this food is the extension of the philosophy you know we've got all these alternatives and these are great and hey we've got whole foods which you know from a health perspective if you want to advocate for you know reducing heart disease and diabetes and cancer risk and all that whole foods all the way um, you know, and if people have a burger every second weekend, they're not going to really run into too many issues. And it's good that people 
have that option, you know, and... Um... Yeah, 100% agree, man. A burger every second weekend is absolutely fine. Uh, the, the, the issue that I'm seeing is people promoting, like people, like, for example, if we just say, for example, Jacko Wacker, we've already mentioned him in the stream, every video, his dinner was just the alternative meats and stuff, the mock meats. He even had like t-shirts and stuff and, um, and like everything was mock meats. So he was living a diet of mock meats and then got ill and turned into an anti-vegan. Well, not an anti-vegan, but he's, he's now yeah, like a bit confused um, yeah. that veganism's deficient and that... Um, animal foods have more nutrients and stuff like this and saying some random fallacies which like I, I debunked a couple of them um when we live streamed and then he went on primal edge health and started saying like similar fallacies i'm like come on man like edge's health is he, he went on that channel yeah he went on primal edge health yeah and uh but i've been on primal edge health as well but i i wasn't like i, I was sort of like going up against him in the discussion instead of just like being a yes man in the discussion and yeah. um so his his diet wasn't good he was an alcoholic from what it looked like um and well, i don't think he was an alcoholic but i think he was drinking more alcohol before he gave up veganism like he went into a downward spiral but he wasn't like an alcoholic oh uh, uh, okay well from he it looked like he was addicted to alcohol from the outside he was drinking a lot um but he was making bad decisions when it came to his diet if if he was eating you know, meat junk food. I don't know if that would have had very good effects on his health either. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. processed meat every single night, you know, like it's just an irresponsible thing to do. Like, hey, you know, the bulk of your diet, the bulk of my diet is plant foods. You know, I, I track my stuff on chronometer every day and like it's pretty nutrient dense. I mean, um, I know when I'm going on a junk food, I, I'm conscious of that. I don't feel as good. Um, that isn't, you know, a reason to throw your morals and your ethics out the window. Like there's other ways. Like, I think he really uh, might have got to you a bit foot soldier. You felt like, you know, we lost someone that you thought was really, you know, dedicated and that like, you were like, well, you, maybe you feel a little bit like, you know, that's why you're so maybe against these junk foods. You see the danger in people just eating them and then them throwing their philosophy out the window. I don't think it was just the junk foods. I think it was that and a combination of him getting peppered with all of these, you know, carnivore people going, oh, you're getting sick. Oh, look at your eyes. Oh, maybe like it's this. You got to stop, mate. Veganism's deteriorating you. And he didn't feel very good and it started to get to his head. And then he was really under suggestion from everyone and he was really easily like swayed. Um, yeah, definitely. I think gaslighting was yeah, a big he, portion of that as well, yeah. And he didn't really look at... He doesn't know much about the science either, so like he was just like, oh, you believe Dr. Gregor, and like maybe you should read the science, and he hasn't even read it himself. <laughs> it's just like, oh, dude, yeah. so like... Yeah, he, he did like, he, he did say like, oh, yeah, everyone's promoting like the China study and shit, and they haven't even read it. And it's like, well, I've read the China study. I, I've read a lot of these, these, uh, th these studies. I don't just read the abstract. Sometimes I really go deep and read an entire study, or I'll look into... Like, he he was saying like the the, the peer reviewed statement um, uh, from the American Dietetics Association that no one had read, but like I'd read that, and it's like, well, you might have not read it. There's about a hundred references. There's, isn't there like 120 references to other studies just in that that paper, that peer reviewed paper alone? Like all the references below it. There's heaps just in yeah. that in that paper. Like they don't just come to conclusions like that and make that the position of the biggest nutrition. Um, sort of association on earth without there, it being very rigorous. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. yeah um, the science is definitely on our side and there's not really any science whatsoever on the carnivore side that makes any sense. But people just seem to be swayed by it because... Who? Uh, I think there's a, lot of there's a few people. Like there's a few people that are persuaded by it. But, I, I, you know, th th I think that that's just a fad, that, that movement there. It's just a fad. People are going to snap out of it sooner or later when they're like... I think if, if you want to eat just meat, mate, just see what happens. Like, you know, and so it's just a matter of time. Vegetable police tried it and his kidneys almost exploded. So <laughs> we're, we've, yeah. we've seen someone who went over to the carnivore diet and he didn't do too well at all. I've seen your commentary and you've got some really good, uh, you're, you're really well researched and you do some really good response videos, bro. Um, I, I, I agree with why you're, I know why you're concerned. Um, I just think when you, when you take um, what you say and you apply it out to the, the population scale, um, I don't know if it's the most 
going to be the most effective in for the most part. Um, I think there are outlying situations where that where your that style will work. I think we have to be multi-dimensional in our approach and choose the approach that is most broad, that is going to appeal to the most amount of people. And not everyone is a hundred, like you're 10 years whole foods vegan. That is like the pinnacle, dude. That is the pinnacle. Not everyone's even gonna be like, not even vegans are adhering to whole foods for 10 years, mate. Like that's hectic. Um, you know, so uh, you, you're, a, you know, and I think we got to take our personal experience sometimes, put it aside and go, okay, let's analyze the, the majority of the population. Do these vegan um, junk food products help animals? Are they helping the vegan movement? You know, and you, your argument was they do more harm than good. You're the title of your video, dude. I know this was clickbait, but mock meat kills more animals. <laughs> I was like, has he gone carnival? <laughs> it, it was a bit clipbait, man. But um, but I wanted to to sort of like take an angle and see if it resonated. And th and sometimes what I do is I make a video uh, with a position like let's say there's a there's an area of th this is the general sort of position. There's like a broad range of positions. Well, I'll take this position and just like make a video on it and see what happens. And if everyone's like, no, you're you're a dickhead, then I'll make a follow up video and say, yeah, maybe that wasn't really the best thing. Like we're doing now, we're we're making a follow up. Like I put something out there. I put pen to like there was a blank page. I drew something on the blank blank page. It wasn't uh, the best drawing in the world. And now we're talking about the drawing and and seeing. F trying to find the truth and we're making a follow-up to that now and we're, we're trying to discover the truth there yeah. so i think this has been an interesting conversation we've like definitely seen a broader perspective you definitely think that people it, it's these digestive issues don't affect um the majority of people the, these are just more sensitive uh type people um and maybe i'm just extrapolating my own experience to the general public uh which is yeah. maybe a fallacious thing to do, you're saying, basically. Uh, well, I just think when you jump from a the, the standard diet, like that people are eating, meat three times a day, burgers on the weekends and beer and, you know, whatever the majority of people are eating, uh, little kids eating chicken nugget, processed chicken nuggets every day and stuff like that, and you get them onto some, you know, vegan mock meats and the rest plant foods and use the mock meats as a complement, I don't think people generally like what like i don't think people are going to run into the same issues you are that hypersensitive whole foods 10-year vegan um what we see more of i i will have to say is that if you start bulking someone's diet up with a bunch of lentils and a bunch of beans and a bunch of potatoes too soon they can run into some discomfort as well so i think that approach might you know just go completely Boom, salad and beans, go for it. And, um, you know, sometimes it's better just to, to meet them where they're at with what their diet already looks like. Macronutrient profile, just switch out the veganize what they already eat sort of thing. And then if they want to move on to, uh, you know, the more pinnacle of the health stuff, add in more whole foods as they progress and as their ethics become reinforced into them stronger. Um, I think meeting them where they're at is probably one of the better approaches. We'll, we'll wrap it up in a sec because I, I don't think there's uh, too much more to talk about. But let's just take an example. Let's say that someone is eating meat three times a day. They're eating meat and vegetables and they're eating meat, vegetables and potatoes. Like meat, meat to veg. That's like what my granddad always used to eat, meat and two veg. Like it's quite a British standard thing to eat like beef and a bit of vegetables like people call themselves meat and two veg men like in the uk i don't know if you've heard that before like let's take someone like that and just say veganize it then what they're doing they're they're, they're keeping everything and just adding the substitute meat for every meal right so do you reckon that's as good or better or worse or do you reckon that's a good idea just to eat the replacement meat three times a day or what do you think okay so you said um do you do i think it's the best approach to replace three meat meals with three meat alternative meals uh from a vegan standpoint yeah. that's very it's going to be better for animals going to be better for the environment is it going to be better for their health probably marginally um replacing polyunsaturated fats uh repla replacing saturated fat and cholesterol with polyunsaturated fat seems to be better for heart disease but um 
is it is it going to be better financially? Well, it depends on what their sort of financial state is. I mean, can they afford that? Um, in that sort of case, and you can say, hey, veganism can be cheaper. You can have oats for breakfast. You can have your, your beans and, you know, salad for lunch. And then you can have your vegan pizza with vegan cheese on it for dinner. Um, I think incorporating these foods into their diet, where knowing that they can veganize what they already eat would be a massive thing for them to know. Um, completely veganizing their whole diet. You know, what if, if they're having a roast we could have a tofurkey roast. If it's outside their price range, we could talk about that. Um, I think every person you meet has different sort of um, obstacles. And I've found that too. So they might be really low income. So you might have to meet them there. They might be heavy, heavy meat eaters, all right, which would be a problem for their health there. Then you might have to discuss with them how this is not good for their health. And maybe they could push that sort of out of their diet more for more whole foods. But if they want burgers, don't deny them their Beyond Burger. So you think it just comes down to responsibility, basically. So if they're going to be eating three meals a day as an uh, advocate, you, you would be saying, yeah, maybe like try some porridge instead for breakfast anyway. Like you wouldn't just be saying like, boom, like to switch out one to one. Well, switch out, you can switch out your milk easy. You can switch out your cheese easy. Um, I, I think meeting them where they're at, where they're at um, maybe getting them to incorporate more whole foods that are cheaper, that would be a good selling point too. Um, uh, give them the alternatives to what they already eat. Like um, if they eat shepherd, shepherd's pie, give them a vegan mince alternative. It, it can be lentils. I, I usually give them both. I give them both. Like what I've been doing is for mince, I'll say, hey, can of lentils or a bag of lentils or some dried soya protein, or you can have this vegan mince from the supermarket. They're different price ranges and different health value. So you can give them multiple different alternatives. Like it just comes down to who you're advocating to. If it was me just advocating to as many people as possible, I'm going for the juiciest um, vegan alternative we've got on the market. The vegan Magnums, the Ben and Jerry's, the you know the the Beyond Burgers, to reach most people. Um, it, it, on a on a one to one basis, I'll be more specific. You know what I mean? But I think yeah, just broadening our brush as much as possible, thinking about all the obstacles people have, financial, dietary, health. Fundamentally, we want to persuade people to stop supporting the animal holocaust, you know, and, and in whatever way you do that, and I know you just want what's best for animals like we all do. Um, I just think we've got to be careful about what we say about vegan products. I mean, we've got to be honest but not throw them under the bus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did go a bit aggressive that in that video, but um, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I think this video has served a good job of discussing both sides of the perspective and speaking to Joey, who's got tremendous experience in the activism, um, actually in just doing real world, being on the street, talking to people, um, just talking to so many people so he's got so much experience so he's definitely a guy who we really want to hear his perspective on this exact issue i, I hope this stream was uh, useful for a lot of people i think we've had a nice discussion we've seen both sides of the perspective and yeah l let's just continue the conversation i think i w was too aggressive i do admit joey that i was too aggressive in that video and i shouldn't really throw the plant foods under the bus and um i think there is a happy medium to be found and i think really yeah, yeah. what i've taken away from this conversation especially is it really comes down to the person you have to meet people where they're at as you're saying you need to be a good activist and know how to reach someone with the correct message um that will fit for that person but at the end of the day we both want the same thing we want the end of the animal holocaust and we want less animals killed and we want um yeah we just want the world to go vegan it's just sometimes can be a very frustrating world to live in with so many people not giving a fuck despite the passion that we all bring to it and be, because of the urgency yeah. of the situation of what is happening to the animals. Yeah, and we're all trying to find our way as well. You know, there's no handbook on this and you're trying to find your way and you've seen problems because you're in the vegan YouTube community. I think that the problems in the vegan YouTube community are a little bit different to the problems you face out there on the front lines uh, when you're advocating to large yeah. scale um, families and stuff. Um, so I... I agree with you 
in sort of theory, but in practice, for the most part, I just don't think it's going to work broadly. But um, I want to say you've been doing very well. I've been watching most of your videos. Good job. Keep up the good work. You've oh, progressed wow. so much. You're well researched. I think that's your intellect is, is at play. You're really good with that sort of skill set of retaining information and you, you're really good at debunking nonsense. So keep up the great work, brother. Thanks, man. Definitely. I um, I really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, you're definitely someone who I hugely look up to. Um, and yeah, keep on doing what you're doing, man. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming on the stream. Um, yep. it, was, it was really good. And uh, I guess we'll leave it there for today, people. So I'll see you all in the next video. Yeah, man. Good, good topic of discussion. Really good topic of dis discussion. And yeah, it really, like when you were talking in your video, I was like, oh, he hasn't thought about that part and that part and that part and that part. So like, it really did get me stimulated into the thought of like advocacy. And I, I, I know where you're coming from, dude. Like, um, yeah. you're worried because of what you see on YouTube with Jacko, especially that was a real shocker, to be honest. I was pretty shocked yeah, about that. that. Um, because he's a good guy, I guess like when I was doing my Epic vegan meals, they weren't health meals. They were just completely junk food meals. I was doing that deliberately to show people, Hey, you don't have to kill animals. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah. that, that wasn't the full composition of my diet and people thought it was a, what I eat in a day video. These were epic vegan meals. These were like, you know what I'm saying? So like for the most part, I eat a pretty healthy diet and, um, keep myself on track. I just think that's irresponsible for someone just to eat vegan junk food at the exclusion of everything else and then blame veganism for that. That's like, in, that's very childlike behavior, bro. I want junk food that's vegan. You know what I mean? And most people do. Yeah. You know, and we need to know, can we get junk food that's vegan or am I going to be eating broccoli and potatoes my whole life? You know what I mean? Like, I'm okay with that. If it, if it means not stabbing animals in the neck, I will do what it takes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to go carnivore if I've got a sore tummy, you know what I'm saying? But like most people, yeah. we need to persuade normal people, man. And like when they walk in the supermarket aisle and you get them a Beyond Burger, I, I'm grabbing them, dude. If I want to persuade someone's dad, to eat a vegan burger, I'm not gonna get them the lentil patty. I'm getting them the full-fledged Beyond Burger with the vegan cheese and the vegan mayo and the vegan bacon crispy, and I'm making it double stack. These, these carnivore yeah. people are, are polluting the, the movement with doubt. It's ridiculous that people exactly. are listening to them. Yeah, yeah. Vegan dieters, vegan dieters, dude. Vegan exactly, dieters, exactly. you know, they, they're, they're jumping from diet to diet like a trend. Vegan, yeah. they're not vegan moral principle holders. They're not yeah. um, animal rights people, you know, they don't yeah, understand. And that's why I promote veganism. The way I promote veganism is through animal rights, which the word vegan is to do with animals. And we need to, you know, not promote veganism exclusively as a health diet, which I see so many people do, right? And even yeah. the bodybuilders and all of that, like they mostly, 95% of the time, are talking about the health, um, promoting veganism as a health diet. And this is where people go, well, you know, this is where they jump around. They don't understand veganism to start with, dude, from where that, from day dot, because they were taught the ideology of veganism from a false premise, from, from the idea that it's a diet, a health diet. Which... And a whole bunch of people, because they were never in it for the animals. They were in it for the fun. They were just raw foodists, dude. They weren't vegans. They weren't vegans, like, in, in, my, in yeah. my eyes. They were just raw foodists, vegan dieters. Um, yeah. I don't think this reflects the majority of the population, dude. I think people are waking up on mass still, even though there's outliers that are flip flopping. Um, yeah. uh, I just think the, the YouTube community is a lot different and I don't know if it represents the population as a whole. I just don't, I'm just not sure about that. Um, okay. we'll see, you know what, dude, I just think from, even from my own perspective, this whole vegans dropping out because of their health ailments thing has gotten me really promoting my own health more. And I'm like, yeah. my mental health is improving. I'm in the gym. I'm looking tanned. I'm making sure I don't drink caffeine anymore. I don't overwork myself because, you know, I'm just overworking myself. But people will just use any excuse with me. Any excuse. Oh, look, he's got bags under his eyes. It's veganism. Oh, look, he's got pale skin. It's because of veganism. Oh, look, he's, you know, out of shape because of veganism. So I'm just making sure that I'm kind of waterproof in the while I'm promoting the, uh, animal rights, you know? So I look good, I'm eating 
predominantly healthy, I'm, rep I'm representing the animals and I'm promoting the vegan uh, alternatives and I'm doing that responsibly, responsibly while promoting whole foods for health as well. But, yeah. but making sure people understand veganism is a moral principle and as long as they don't stab animals, you can have your burger, just, you know, but make sure you're responsible with your diet as well. Um, I just think having a holistic approach so we don't skew ourselves into these niches where we're like exclusively healthy or exclusively this. We just want animals to be liberated and we, we make sure we adapt where we need to and encompass the whole the whole spectrum as much as possible. Not responsible. They're blaming so they veganism for their own irresponsible behavior and lifestyle choices. You know, like if you yeah. get drunk, hop in a car and kill someone, you don't blame the alcohol, you don't blame the car, you blame yourself. Don't drink the alcohol, don't j jump in the car. You know?